For thousands of passengers, the warm welcome makes the long haul all worthwhile. But it's not for everybody. In a locked immigration office, Emmanuel is having an anxious wait. I've been in the plane for the past two days. I'm fucking tired. And now I have to wait here in the chair. This gentleman has arrived on an Italian passport. Speaking to him, our officer realised that he's not a native Italian speaker. The question is now, what is his nationality? I can't chill out until they tell me what, whatever is going to happen. I have a number of concerns about this passport. The first one is we have some stamps in his passport that indicate he entered and left Melbourne Airport in 1999. We have no record of that on our systems, which sets alarm bells ringing. And looking at these stamps, I'm not satisfied that they're genuine. I'm going to have to get an expert to have a look at this a little later to confirm my opinion. We've got some issues with this chap. If this passport isn't his, then the question is, who is he? Is he a security threat? Is he coming to work illegally? Or is he what we call a fugitive from justice? Has he committed a crime in another country? At the baggage claim, customs have put a man under surveillance. When he was at the queue, he was jumping the queues as well at immigration to try and get through as quick as he could. To me, he looks nervous. Ladies and gentlemen, for security reasons... Okay, Nelson, why did you change your flight? I got sick. Are you better now? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. So you got to you got to Johannesburg and then you booked a ticket to Australia. So originally you were just so I came from London to gonna... Johannesburg. To Johannesburg. But today you're supposed to be back in London rather than being in Sydney. Right. If you suddenly want to come to Australia, there must be something you want to look at. Uh, the kangaroos. Um, watch that show, Steve, and seen a lot of this the show, the Steve, the Steve. crocodile guy. <laughs> Cro yeah, okay. the crocodile guy. So I know I know quite a bit about, about Australia. You don't know many of the sites though. Can you tell me anything about Sydney that you know? About Sydney, they have the opera, the opera house. Opera house, yep. You said you're here for two weeks. What but you, you but you're, you're booked to go out in what two days time? Because that doesn't make sense. I'm not staying. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Staying here for two days doesn't make sense right. at all. Back in immigration, Emmanuel wants to get on with his holiday. And he wants to speak in English. Notice his ID code. Issued yeah. in two different years, and it's the same photograph. Yeah. yeah. So this one was supposed to be issued in 2000, and this one was issued a year before in 99. Why would you still have the same passport photograph? Yeah. Yeah. Is his contact book. Very few of the names appear to be Italian. Hello, my name's Peter Davis. You're Emmanuel? Nice to meet you, huh? This officer, his name is Deepak. He's a trainee down here at the airport. The first thing that we wanted to ask you about is you don't actually have a visa to Australia. Can you explain why you don't have a visa? Because you don't usually get a visa. Everybody needs a visa to come to Australia. I was here once before as well. I didn't need a visa. Well, that's something I wanted to talk to you about as well. Now, how did you find out about the Ashfield motoring? It's just two friends that have been here before. OK. Is this your wallet? Yeah. I'm just going to run a little swab over it. This is to test to see whether you've been in contact with any narcotics. Okay. Have you been in contact with any narcotics? I don't know. Well, you either know Just or you don't. Just in case somebody was beside. No, no. I no, asked whether you had used it, not anyone oh, else. Oh, no, if I, I, no, no, I don't use this. Okay. The reason I'm asking you is just to simply find out whether you have. So if I do do this iron scan, it does come up with marijuana or cocaine or heroin or ecstasy or whatever. Right. I know whether you've lied to me or not. So, Mr. Quaddy, you just got on an aircraft without getting a visa for Australia. Is that right? Yeah. And where did you board the aircraft? Aircraft yeah. from Denmark. How long were you in Denmark for? Two days. Why? Just to look around. You said that you've been to Australia before. When did you come to Australia before? I was in 99. Why? To see the country. And how long were you here for? 20 days. 20 days. And what airport did you come in? Melbourne. Melbourne. And where did you go out? Where? Where? Melbourne. Melbourne. Well, the thing is, Mr. Quaddy, we don't have any record of you arriving or departing on this passport. Nobody's ever used this passport to come to Australia before, and those stamps are fake. Fake? Fake. Can't be fake. They're the wrong shape for a start. It's not a forge. I think it is. I think not. He doesn't have a clue about Sydney. He doesn't have a clue. Well, then we've got something, so... Check that out, mate. Thank you. These are called iron scan wands. They detect the presence of particles of narcotics or explosive devices. And 
they run through a little chamber here and they react according to the speed at which they go through. How far is Asheville anyways? I don't know why they'll give me that number. Well, it's not really near the city. It's not really near the beaches, it's not. It's not. <laughs> now that's just a positive for cocaine. That's off the gentleman's credit cards. This swab is from his luggage. Uh, it's been in contact with some, eh? Fascist! 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 The unhappy travellers have flown in from New York. Australia, very good people. Listen to me, listen to what I'm saying, ma'am. No, stop talking and listen to what I'm saying. We asked you if you had food, you said no. When we found the food, you told us that you had food. I asked if you had any other food, you said you had carrots. No, if you no, no listen to what I'm saying, ma'am. You told me you had the carrots, I asked you to find them. And as soon as you started looking for them, listen to what I'm saying, ma'am. Food from overseas carries with it the threat of pests and disease. When you went to find the carrots, I searched another bag, I found apples, and I had asked you, did you have any other food other than the carrots, and you told me no. I'm telling you I did. No, listen, to, no, listen to me. At immigration in Sydney Airport, Emmanuel's passport says Italian, but is the document genuine? The bottom line is, if this passport is a forgery, and I think it is, Okay, then I don't know who you are, and I don't know what nationality you are, but I believe my officer when he tells me that you can't speak Italian properly. I don't speak Italian, I told him, but I prefer to talk in English. Yes, but he said you speak Italian like a person who has learnt the language. No. No? Okay. Where were you born? Rome. In He's Rome. got some English. And what are your parents? Smattering or more mm -hmm. of Italian. Mummy. We think he could be Albanian. Who are you going to see here? Nobody. Nobody. What were you going to do here? Just look around. How long for? To, uh, not a month, because with the fourth I start work, work again. In Albania, the TV does not have subtitles and major programs, well, most of the programs are in English and Italian, so even people with little education have those languages. He really fits the profile for us, but we'll see what else he will tell us. Have you booked any tours? Do you know what you're going to see? Do you know what you're going to do here? Well, in a month time, obviously, I've got time enough to look around. Yeah, but you've got no plans. People don't generally get on a plane and come to another country for a holiday without any idea of what they're going to do. When you told me food, I thought what food which I ate in the plane. I didn't know uh, well, clearly seeds or, or prunes or uh, okay, apricots, we... which is uh, need, uh, need my husband for constipation. Okay. Clearly, food that you've eaten on the plane is not of concern to us. Food that you bring into the country is of concern to us. So and now that, I know, and now and I know, now I know. I asked you if you had food in your other big bags and you told me you had clothes in them. We ran those bags through the x-ray and we found more items that are prohibited under the Australian Quarantine Act. You are going to be issued with a $220 fine. Why I must pay, pay my wife? How much money did you bring with you? I go 700 quid. 700? Euros. 700 euros won't get you very far. Of course not. No. Did you bring travellers checks or anything like that? I, I left in a hurry so I forgot everything back. Why did you leave in such a hurry? It's just a holiday. I know it's holiday. So why did you leave in such a hurry? I just left. I'm going to get an expert to have a look at this passport. Okay. But there's some serious problems with it. And until those problems are resolved, you might find yourself in a situation where you won't be granted entry to Australia today. I won't? No. How about all the money which I spend on? At the customs barrier, Nelson's claim that he's drug free is looking shaky. The gentleman's got readings for cocaine on both. Um, 158, mm. 19, 8 segments, mm. 65, 17 and 3 segments. Okay. I might just get you to quickly x-ray this. The readings came from his wallet and luggage. Some people can see narcotics inside the lining or inside the structure of bags. Uh, in this case, we're looking for cocaine. Uh, it'd show up as a organic substance on here. There's a pen, a few other items, glasses, case, whatnot. But apart from that, it appears to be clear. No coke in the bags, but his story just doesn't add up. Travel itinerary for William Kelly. Do you know him? No, I'm just wondering why that, that's my signature. Well, I'm wondering why because it's your signature as well. May, yeah, they, she may have made a mistake. In his documents, with his signature there, 
Trevor Lachina, Tenere for William Kelly. Uh, it's for him to depart Joburg to go to Cape Town in a couple of days' time. Ring up, uh, ring up Intel and see if there's anything sort of on that name or whether he's travelled here before. You don't know that person? No. Travel itinerary for Mr. William Kelly. Nelson's second bag is about to be x rayed That clarifies the image a bit more, particularly the handles are a good place to conceal. At Sydney Airport. Kilo Barbin, Kilo Barbin. Echo. Customs officers have been searching Nelson for drugs. OK, thanks a lot. Bye. So far? It's fine, the handles are fine. Nothing. There you go, buddy. Is it almost done? What's that? Uh, not yet. You'll be the first to know when it is. He's had, he's had enough. He's not looking well, No, and I don't think the sitting down's got anything to do with the fact he's tired. Are you alright? Are you feeling ill at all? No, no, I'm fine. Just tired. Pardon me? Just tired. I'm fine. I'm just tired because it's been a long flight, that's all. We took an iron scan before of yeah. your goods. Yeah. You saw me do that? Right. Mm -hmm. I came up for a reading of cocaine. Okay. Right, so I'm only going to ask you once, once mm -hmm. only. Mm -hmm. When's the last time you used cocaine? I'm not asking if, I'm asking cocaine. when. I don't use cocaine. You've never used cocaine? No. I don't even smoke, I don't drink. You've never touched cocaine, wouldn't know what it looks like? No. In Melbourne, the tourists from New York can't understand why they've been fined $220. Why I must pay, pay my flight? Some dealer. The fine is because of a false declaration on your passenger card. You've ticked no to having food. It says food of any type. Um, and you've ticked no to having that when blatantly you've got, you know, three kilos of fresh foods right here in your cabin luggage. Tell me, no? tell me how is mine here? The fine today? I mean, American dollars. American dollars, about half. But we'll have to exchange it. You take our money. We must eat. We must see. The lady has been issued with a $220 fine. She's required to pay that before she leaves the airport today. They took all my money. This five dollars, five dollars. I know. Are you taking two hundred dollars? First, she claimed that she could not read English, and when we questioned her further, she had filled the cards in, so she clearly understood English. She speaks very good English, so yes, yeah, she understands what's going on. I feel frustrated. This is simple for me. You understand? Clearly. The uh, passengers aren't happy about what's going on. Back in Sydney, Emmanuel's dodgy passport has landed him in trouble. Okay, how did you get that? How did you get the it? Passport. Tell me how, do you, how you got it. With the passport? Yeah. At the same time? Yeah, the same time. Right, they were issued in two different years. This passport photograph is the same as the one in there. Yeah, I know you got them at the same time because you paid for them. You didn't get them from the Italian authorities. I don't think you are Emmanuel Quatti. I think you are somebody else. Nope. I think you are not an Italian citizen. I think you're something else. Interview suspended at 7.05. I feel like he's lying to me. Um, I don't know his motives, I don't know his reason, but I don't think he's telling me the truth. That's probably just real. Because with this false one, I wouldn't be here. He's still saying it's real, and he's saying you can believe what he you want. He has to, because I'm sure he's invested a lot of time and effort. It in... cost him money. Oh, yeah. yeah. It but would have cost him heaps. Yeah, you know, I asked him how much it cost, and he said he just got it through the normal processes. Yeah, the normal people smuggling processes. Yeah. The money that you've exchanged, you need to pay this lady. For me, it is simple. Vegetables and fruit, yes. Prunes and the apricot from constipation. My husband has a constipation. Pumpkin seeds from uh, uh, prostate. Uh, she still believes that she has done nothing wrong by bringing the items into Australia, despite the fact that she's failed to declare and has admitted that she was aware of the contents of her bags. These people do very terrible, very no good. While the protest continues, for me, no good. Linda's worst fear is realised. Fruit fly. There you go, fruit fly. We have a, a disease on, a pest on, on the actual fruit that's come in. So again, that, that's uh, an incredibly serious, serious matter. I do donation because Australia people are very cheap. 
going to attempt to catch him. The most dangerous thing that this fly could do would be to get out into the Australian fruit growing region and actually lay some kind of larvae. Potentially the cost is millions and millions of dollars. Dave, uh, we got a passenger downstairs. I'd like you to look at his passport if you don't mind. The guy is not being particularly cooperative and I don't think I'm going to get any information out of him so I'm relying on the document. Yeah, no problems. Just leave right. with us and I'll uh, give you a call. Thanks mate. Thanks. Okay. I got the plane from Denmark to here. Nobody told me anything. So when I get here, they say it's false. It's looking quite good actually. I can't see any damage there at all. No, no evidence there has been substituted or used for the second time. If I get told by an expert document examiner that his document is genuine, then I'll go in there with an open mind. I think if he was a genuine visitor and I'd just had that conversation with him that I'd had, he'd be a little bit more outraged and a little bit more nervous than he is at the moment. Feel miserable. Feel like not human. In customs, Michael is still trying to figure out if Nelson's a drug courier or just a hapless traveller. The only one thing I don't understand is you said you've always wanted to come to Australia. The only thing you can mention to me is one spot. I know. I mean, I just find that unusual. I find that very unusual. I've worked here for nine years, and I find that unusual. I find the travel movements unusual. Right. I find the fact that you actually bought a ticket to go back to London today. You changed your ticket because you were sick. You're only going to spend four days in South Africa Tickets rather than nine days. Tickets are usually cheaper when you buy them that way. So you're here for two buy. weeks. You've got a ticket to leave Australia yes. in two days. That's why. I, I this is what I don't understand. And this is what I'm going to get you to tell me in the next couple of minutes, all right? I'm going to do another iron scan. Nelson so keeps can, saying he doesn't do before. drugs. How old is your toothbrush? Pardon me? Your toothbrush. How old is your um, toothbrush? It's quite old, like three months. Are you the only person who uses your toothbrush? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to do a little swab on that. Just on that. Uh, I'm, going to run, I'm going to run the dog over him first. At immigration, the moment of truth has arrived for Peter and Emmanuel. Did they find anything out? Two Aussie stamps, the Melbourne ones. Uh, yeah, they're both counterfeit. The uh, pages are all counterfeit, the watermark's counterfeit. Um, I've also checked around the photograph as well. There's no, no evidence there has been substituted or used for the second time. Okay, thank you. Yeah. The actual page and the whole passport is counterfeit. From cover right through to the back cover. Okay, interview resumed at 8.25. Okay, Emmanuel, I'll call you that for the sake of convenience, but we've just had uh, an expert in document examination look at your passport and they have confirmed what I believed, and that is that your passport is a forgery. A forgery, okay? What do you have to say about that? You're sure it's a forgery? Yes. I wouldn't tell you it was if it wasn't. Maybe. So many people who come to Australia with dodgy documents have basically purchased them, organised them, or been given them for work purposes. The Italian passport we are seizing because it is forged and it will not be seizing it and will, it will not be returned to you. We think he's Albanian. He won't be prosecuted and he won't be prosecuted because there really is no point to it. What we're after is a quick turnaround. This sends a really strong message to people traffickers, people who organise these sorts of documents. You can't even get past the border. No charges, but the man will be sent back to Europe. Just spoke to Singapore Airlines. Uh, they can get him out on the one o'clock flight. Could go all the way through to Copenhagen, but certainly Singapore at this stage. Fantastic. I don't think that I'll be coming here again. <laughs> For sure not. <laughs> Singapore Airlines was fined $5,000 for flying the passenger to Australia without a visa. If he hasn't got anything strapped around that groin of his, oh, yes. I reckon it could be anything. Grace the Labrador is a customs officer, trained to sit when she detects drugs. Nelson, 
that dog showed a positive reaction to you, sat down right next to you, just going to ask you, are you carrying anything around your, your groin? Are you carrying anything on your body? In, am I carrying? No. No? Not carrying anything illegal around your body at all? No. Have you swallowed any drugs? No. Have you stuffed any drugs inside you? No. Lord Howe is a World Heritage Site, an island paradise, hardly the scene for an international smuggling operation. Two Japanese tourists coming in from Lord Howe Island tonight on their way out to Japan. We've got information that they're smuggling out protected wildlife from Lord Howe Island, which can include fauna of any kind, snakes, birds, lizards, insects. The tip-off came from police stationed on the island. Oscar one, Oscar one. We've got them under surveillance. We know where they are. Satoru, that's him dashing to the toilet, and Haidishi spent five nights on Lord Howe. They had no credit cards and no local currency. Now, the intention is to covertly examine the baggage down here no. in the baggage handling area so that we can examine the baggage without them knowing it. We believe they're up checking in. We don't believe the bags have actually come down yet, so we're just hoping to catch them as they slide down the shoes. Waiting, waiting, waiting. If these guys have got wildlife, either they're collectors or it's for commercial purposes. If it's for commercial reasons, these things go for big money, $10,000, $100,000 even. You know, it's a criminal offence, so we take it very seriously and it can carry jail time. At immigration, Deborah has triggered an alert on her way in from New Zealand. She's coming back to Australia on a tourist visa, but um, she's overstayed previously. You just take a seat over there, thanks. So uh, she may not be entitled to have that visa. Deborah is a UK citizen. Okay, what's the purpose of this trip into Australia? What's the purpose of this trip? Yeah. My life is here. I have a boyfriend here. I want to um, sort out my sponsorship with the company that I was originally going to be sponsored by. Now, you were granted um, an electronic tourist visa. Yeah. And where were you when that? electronic visa was granted to you? I was here in Australia. Okay. How did you apply for that? I went to see a lawyer. Is he a migration agent? Yeah. Did he explain to you that um, to apply for an electronic tourist visa you must be outside of Australia? How he done it, I don't know. I was just happy it was getting done. Can I just ask what's actually going to happen now? Well, a decision will be made as to whether this visa, this electronic visa you have is cancelled. If a decision is made to cancel the visa, yeah. then yes, you'll be, you'll be put on the first available flight oh back to the UK. Can I have a cigarette? No, I'm afraid not. There's no smoking anywhere inside the building. Right. She has an Australian citizen boyfriend who we all attempt to contact. Um, the, the visa that she has was um, obtained incorrectly while she was in the country, which she should not have been. At this stage, it um, could go either way. That'd be it. Satoru's bag has arrived, but Haidishi's still checking in. Quarter to nine, flight leaves at 9.30. We'd like to covertly examine the baggage, but we're, we're backed up against when the flight has to leave and holding up the flight. I spoke to him, he said about 10 past nine is the latest you can need the bags. So if there's nothing in there, we will have them back down to you by then. So that bag need to be uh, offloaded? We don't know yet. We can't open it at the moment because to examine to, it. Yeah, well, departure time is 9.30. The last guy's checked in on his bag, should be coming down now. Apparently he's the last guy on the flight. And we've run out of time to do a covert examination. So what we might do is, rather than uh, physically examine him, we'll take it up and put him through the x-ray. They let the first passenger go through, up to the plane, ready to depart. The second guy we're going to catch as he comes through and then go collect the first guy if we have time, just in case the first guy is um, trying to test the waters to see if we're actually watching and see if they're going to get searched. Just looking for the geckos, lizards, any uh, wildlife material in that one. Do you have a telephone number for, for your boyfriend? Does he have a mobile? I'll give you his work number. Just got the contact details for the boyfriend, uh, who I'll, I'll ring and um, just have a chat with him and just 
confirm the relationship. Good afternoon, Matthew. Matthew, hello, you there? Right. My name's Alan, I'm an immigration officer at Sydney Airport. I'm having a chat uh, with a lady. Yes, with Deborah. She's your partner. Okay. And how long have you, have you known her? Five, five full months we were together. We were talking about babies, you know, money, houses, where we'd like to get married. She's just travelled a short trip to New Zealand um, and returned. Do you know what the purpose of um, her return to Australia is? She was um, coming back here to, to travel, but also to um, uh, be legal in order to, to submit a, a further application for sponsorship into Australia. All right. Thank you very much. Bye bye. The relationship appears genuine. Um, it's just a matter now of whether she is abusing the visa system or not. At Sydney Airport. I'm going to ask you again, are you carrying any drugs around your person? Nelson, a traveller from South Africa, is being interrogated by customs officers. Just giving you the opportunity, mate, before we take this further, that's all. His wallet and luggage have already tested positive for traces of cocaine. I'm not asking if, I'm asking when. I don't use cocaine. You've never used cocaine? And then there was this. Grace, the Labrador, is trained to sit when she detects drugs. Nelson has some explaining to do. Uh, you've seen the way the dogs reacted to you. Right. Which may indicate you have narcotics concealed on your body. Well, the dog may have responded to leakage, which as is inserted, they have to clench to keep it uh, concealed inside their bodies. We just want to give you a pat down, just a frisk. The other thing is if he's a user and yeah. he's been sweating, it's going to come out through the crotch primarily where the pores are the most, pores, so yeah. the sweat. He said he hasn't been near any narcotics, so I've decided to test something that only he's touched, which is his toothbrush. He says no one else has been near his toothbrush, so... I reckon hopefully we might get some sort of a positive reaction to cocaine here. I think she's been a bit um, naive. At immigration, Deborah is waiting to find out if she'll be allowed back into Australia. Justin, Alan. Her visa was issued illegally. The situation is she, she has an Australian citizen boyfriend who I've just rung up. She's been living with him since uh, last year. But the ETA that she applied for on shore was done through a migration agent. This immigration agent told me, and I asked him specifically the question, you know, are you 100% certain she'll be, you know, able to get back into Australia? And he says to me, I am 100% certain if she isn't, she'll be the first person ever not to be allowed in. She knows it was granted while she was onshore. She claims that she's unsure of the, um, the exact procedure. Right. Um, but I've tried to pin her down as to whether he knew she was going to remain in right. Australia. Right. But the only reason she's gone to New Zealand is to get another visa and continue what oh, she's yes. doing. trip to New Zealand was purely to, to reactivate the electronic right. visa. But she knew she overstayed. Yes. I've had it taken my clothes off. <laughs> it wouldn't use it. With Nelson maintaining his innocence, the toothbrush test comes in. Got a nice high rating for cocaine again. So, he's the only person that's near his toothbrush. He's the only person that's touched it. He's not wearing underwear. He's not, he's not wearing there's, underwear. No, there's nothing. Not only has he been near cocaine, but he's been near it quite recently. But they still don't know if he is simply a drug user or a smuggler. Hang on. Get the sole out. Just pull that out. For Deborah, more shocking news. This time about her old visa, the one she overstayed by four months. This migration agent, he should have explained it to you that there was a three-year automatic exclusion period. Okay. No one has told me this. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be happy. I don't want to go for this. I find it really upsetting. The letter that Deborah had received from immigration did state that she was subject to a three-year exclusion period. The immigration agent was quite clear it wouldn't apply to a British subject. I'm not enjoying this since September. My life has been up and down like that. I have a relationship here. I don't even know whether to continue or to finish. It's just everything is up in the air and I just want to get it sorted out. 
once and for all. I would like to stay here. We have my left shoulder and beyond the big family at 56. In departures, Haidishi is still under surveillance. Just saying about here, his mates in the queue, so... Okay. Um, Customers suspect our Japanese travellers are trying to smuggle out wildlife. The x-rays are inconclusive. Get out. One team in there, one team in there. Get it done quickly as we can, and then we'll, we'll um, reassess after that. This one, yours? This bag? Yes. Yes? yes? Okay. I'm going to have a look inside the bag. At Sydney Airport, Satoru and Hadishi have missed their flight. Cow bomb. Customs officers are searching their bags for native wildlife. That's not really. But what's Satoru got? These things are huge and very alive. We've got quarantine coming up to make an appraisal to help us assist what they might be. This one, one. One. Two, three. No, no, no. No more? No, no. Just one? What we've got is a couple of Japanese guys went over to uh, Lord Howe Island. They've acted in a way that um, in previous situations people have brought back sighties, beetles and things and attempted to export them. I mean, obviously you're not going to be able to identify them, but just maybe appraise what they could be. Yeah, it's just a lava form. It's pretty hard to tell what they are. Until they, you know, until they pupate into, into the adult form, I can't tell exactly what they are just from that. Are there any pictures in there? Lord Howe Island pictures? Is the answer hidden in Satoru's camera? With no drugs in Nelson's bags or clothes, there's just one more place to search. I'm basically concerned he's either swallowed some, I think he's stuffed some coke or he stuffed it up his, up his ass, basically. So I had a good feel around it. He's not wearing undies or nothing else. Is he flexing at all? His ass is... I just spoke to my supervisor. Oh, what we're going to do is we're just going to take you to an interview room. There's a few more questions, obviously, I'd like to ask you, as I said to you before. Okay. And, um, and we'll go from there, all right? Just as well. At present, we're assessing a gentleman for an internal examination. Uh, which is an ultrasound at a hospital. Behind closed doors, Nelson has suddenly become a lot less cooperative. You don't seem like a bad guy. You've done everything I've asked you, and I've, and I've responded well back to you. Right, I do respect that. Right, but suddenly, when it comes to the end, you don't want to finish it. I think it's frustrating when a person keeps denying that he's got something, you, you, you really do basically get the shits with it, I suppose, because you, you think he's, he's telling me a lie, he's telling me a lie, he's, and he just keeps sticking with it. Um, you think something different, and in this case we do, we think, we think he's loaded, we think he's, he's got something inside him, um, but yet he's still saying, no, 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 I don't. As he was trying to work it, I've actually missed it, and he was deleting a picture of some kind of bug or animal on the screen. There's actually birds, insects. Some of them actually look like they're live. Some look like pictures from museums. Turn around. He keeps saying to me, this one, this, um, which to my understanding means bad. Like he's done something bad, but he doesn't understand much beyond that. We're kind of just holding tight now until we can get an interpreter in. Basically, right now, as the person's refused um, consent for an internal search. He's trying to play the system, thinking that we'll just go give up. Doesn't happen that way. I think right now he's looking for an out clause that he can get away with. There's not, and there won't be. Uh, the federal police are in there now, but uh, he's just making it worse for himself the longer he goes on. I've never had a person refuse to sign and not have anything. It doesn't rub right. I think he's carrying something. I've got no doubt he's carrying something. Nelson consented to an internal search eight hours later. Medical staff scanned his abdomen. 
Over the next nine hours, Nelson passed 76 pellets wrapped in tape. The pellets contained high-grade cocaine worth $629,000. Nelson said a man offered him $4,000 US to bring the cocaine into Australia. Deborah, what I have here in front of me is called a notice of intention to consider cancelling. Now that's not a notice that we're going to cancel your visa, it's simply a notice that we intend to consider cancelling. <laughs> yeah. Right, do you want to have a break? No. Want some water? No, I'm fine. She was incredibly disappointed. She felt that the whole world was more or less against her. This is a legal procedure that I have yeah. to go through, okay? I will give you 10 minutes or more to consider a response to this notice, and then a decision will be made as to whether we cancel your visa. Cancellation means a three-year ban from Australia, and goodbye to Matthew. If the decision is made to cancel your visa, then you will be put on the first plane <laughs> back to the UK. This is ridiculous. I asked whether I could go out there and see her, and you know the answer is quite simply no, because it's behind the line, which was really tough, which was really hard. Sydney Airport, Deborah's case is being reviewed. The situation is that she's uh, you know, um, breached the Migration Act, basically. Uh, and so we'll make a, make a decision now as to sort of how far we go with it. What are your views on this one? The ETA has been um, granted um, unlawfully. Uh, okay. she's, she was onshore at the time of application. Um, so that's an invalid grant. She wouldn't have got the electronic visa if she'd have applied offshore, done the right thing. And she also, yeah, is subject to a three-year exclusion period. That's right, she has to seek waiver and she has to have compelling, compassionate circumstances. Yeah. She has a migration agent. She said he was involved in getting that visa. And then a few days after the visa was granted, she went to New Zealand. Who issued it? It says it was issued by this travel agency in New Zealand. Two days ago. Can she explain that? All she knows is that she went to a migration agent and, and he made all their arrangements. Oh. Can you ask him where he got that from? Lord Howe Island. I'm Lord Howe Island. Okay. In departures, Satoru is trying to explain why he had larvae hidden in his tackle box. What is his interest in these? My interest was uh, taking a picture of uh, the native uh, creatures. Basically what Malcolm's trying to establish is, are these items protected and if so, what would be the impact of having them removed so that we can ascertain whether we're going to arrest and charge him or just seize the goods. So unless you can identify where and what part of the island it comes from, you can't say that. Yeah. If it's serious enough of uh, impact, the penalties can be anywhere up to 10 years in jail and uh, $110,000. Yeah. Could you ask him what he does in Japan for work? I'm a builder. A builder? Yeah. And could you ask Mr. Fujimoto what he does? Used car salesman. Used car salesman, okay. Best case scenario at the moment, um, he's going to spend an extra night in Sydney and um, fly out tomorrow. Satoru and Hideshi were charged with attempting to export a regulated native specimen. The tackle box contained 21 staghorn larvae and 27 eggs, with a potential value of $48,000 to Japanese collectors. At trial, it was found that Satoru and Hideshi had used the larvae for fishing. She needs to get really angry with this migration agent. And I want you to get the official complaint form so she can log a complaint. And if she needs to ring her boyfriend, I guess she can ring him too. There's always room for waiver because the jams people get themselves into, it's just amazing. You just can't believe how complicated people's lives become. I'll come back in, I'll give you a few moments to compose yourself and 
think about what you want to say. Deborah has one chance only of getting back into Australia. If she comes up with something new, different, a good reason, the cancellation may not actually go through. Well, she's quite obviously very upset. Most of her belongings, personal belongings, are at her address in Sydney where she's been living. Um, she's facing the prospect of um, being removed back to the UK, uh, facing the prospect of uh, a split in the you know, relationship which she has with an Australian citizen. Ashmore Reef is a national park, a known hotspot for people smuggling and illegal fishing. For four days, Bob and the crew of customs vessel Corayo Bay have been embroiled in a game of cat and mouse with this vessel. The boarding party don't know who or what they'll find on board. They must be ready for anything. Now this is boarding party. I confirm we are on board a Indonesian fishing vessel. Over. All right, Jeff. I've got nothing up for it. Prawani, uh, Prawanda. Tidak. 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 Is this your boat? Uh, no, it is not. We've got some uh, shark up here, just on the starboard side, Roger. over the beam. How much? Uh, drying sharp in Between 15 to 20 kilos. Jeff, just going inside the coach house. Yep, no worries. Watch your back there for you. Yep. Underneath, if you lift up these planks. We've got some uh, bags of rice. Got a couple of oars down the bottom. Uh, some water. And I've got the full POB inside. Did you get that, Jeff? <laughs> Welcome to Melbourne, the customs. I don't know. No, I'm just hot and tired. I ain't been asleep or anything. I've selected a passenger who's just arrived from America. He's come here for a 15-day stay. He appears very nervous. Bobby is an unemployed yeah. factory yeah. worker from Indiana. Yeah. And everything that you're carrying today belongs to you. Yes? Yes. Excellent. And have you got your airline ticket? Except for one thing. Yeah, which is if what? It's, if still here. Uh, I've got an engagement ring in that Fantastic. Thing. So for some lucky lady in Australia, yeah, I guess? Yeah, yeah. That's very good. He's unusually nervous, more than I would expect. Oh, uh, boring. Where will you be staying? Uh, uh, that, that's just it. I haven't got a motel. You haven't got a motel? Yeah. Now, does she, is she aware that you're coming to Australia? Uh, no, she, uh, she lives here. She lives here? Uh, I don't have her address. How come? Uh, I can't pronounce it, <laughs> so I, I never could spell it. That's all right, but uh, you do have it written down in your diary? Uh, somewhere. Somewhere. Uh, yeah, and I, I didn't bring it with me. You didn't bring the diary with you? <laughs> no, that's why I was going to look for a phone book, so it should be in the book, hopefully. And how did you meet this lady? Uh, well, really, we haven't met yet. You haven't met yet? It was over the internet. <laughs> Hi, over. On board are seven P.O.B. That's all I have inside here, Jeff. We have 600, roughly, estimate of 600 troker shells. Troker shells, that's correct. The protected troker shell is sold as a paint additive and to make buttons. Take it, so a person's out of time. Uh, Roger. The vessel we have at the moment uh, was spotted approximately four days ago. We think he was collecting troker shell, which is illegal under the Environment Australia Act. The Indonesian skipper claimed they were fishing for shark fin, legal within limits. What is your name? Daniane Slay. My boat's crew warned him off once, and uh, we thought that would be the last we saw of him. No, 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 just head. Yep, yeah. um, You have been? Lo and behold, the next day, he was back there again. Uh, so again, my boat's crew asked him to go, and we believed he'd actually sailed away. Uh, we have a uh, reception party waiting for you on top of the platform. Today, there won't be a third warning. The skipper on the right and his crew are detained for fishing illegally for Troker's shell. The boat has been impounded. The crew are detained. We're taking them back into Darwin. And uh, once we get back into port, what they've done can be investigated further. Back in Melbourne, Six Bobby's Six internet Six romance is becoming a real mystery. Um, it's very interesting. He's only got $600 in cash. Mm -hmm. He's here to engage to propose to his girlfriend, but he's not staying with her. And he hasn't got an address of where, just about to start the bag exam, but I wanted to be, to be here. How you doing, sir? That's fine. 
All right, so what brings you to Australia on this occasion? I just met someone over the internet. You met this lady on the internet how long ago? Oh, man, it's been about a year. About a year? Are you staying with her or are you going to the hotel? Which one is it? Uh, that's what I don't know. I'm going to check with her. I'm wanting to go stay with her, but if I don't, if I don't see her, I'll have to get a motel till I find her. Okay, what's her name? Uh, Chiracity. Chiracity. And her surname? You, you don't know? Van Dyer. Okay. C H C H A R I S S A T Y. Okay. And she's going to be out here waiting for you. Sydney Airport, Deborah, a UK citizen, has one last chance to convince immigration not to cancel her visa. The one she arrived on was issued illegally, arranged by a migration agent. She also overstayed her old visa by four months. I asked immigration whether I could go out there and see her, and you know the answer is quite simply no because it's behind the line, which was really hard. With boyfriend Matthew awaiting her return, Deborah's future depends on what she says next. Right, Deborah, do you have anything you wish to say in response to the grounds for cancellation? I have a partner here, I have a bank account here. I'm here with the intention of actually staying and working lawfully here. Cancellation means a flight back to the UK and a three-year ban from Australia. I didn't realise it was a three-year um, exclusion. So I've been a bit ignorant. I've been silly. I put my hand up to that. But I haven't done anything intentionally. If I knew this was the situation, I would have bought my own fucking ticket and packed my own bags and said goodbye to the people that I wanted to say goodbye to, not live like this. Okay. This is a disgrace for me. At Ashmore Reef, customs officers are searching the seven Indonesians caught fishing illegally for trocus shell. These are the sort of things we're looking for, searching the bags, anything to be used as a weapon. Um, this is just a nail, a nail knife really, but um, we'll confiscate that and take it out of his bag. 43. All the rest of the luggage is just really clothes and uh, tobacco, which we're, we're going to let them keep. The three-day tow back to Darwin is no cruise. That fishing boat is unstable. We're going about as fast as we can go. The pressure of the sea in the front of those boats, if we tow any faster, we'll, we'll tend to break those planks away. What sort of speed are we doing there? Just to be right uh, with the side on the bottom. If we can't tow it and we can't get it back, uh, we may actually have to destroy it on the way in. And for these guys, that's their whole livelihood. <laughs> I've been out of England for two years. I don't even know where to start if I go back there. <sighs> this was never my intention. I'm not a fucking drug smuggler. I've never broken any laws here. I'm not raping children. You, you have broken. <laughs> I mean, I have broken okay. an immigration law, yes. And, and that's why you're in the situation that you are now. That plus some very um, unreliable advice that you may or may not have received. I'll go and discuss these details with the manager, okay, and a decision will be made and I'll come back and inform you, okay? I've been doing the job for seven years and it's no easier. Uh, yeah. People get upset quite visibly, quite obviously. Nightfall at sea delivers rest for some, but disaster for the boarding crew. See a fair bit of water inside. The Indonesian tow is sick. During the night, the corking has come away from the planking. At speed, the corking actually starts to dissolve. So we got to a situation this morning where we had a bilge full of water and necessitated us stopping, pumping the, the bilge right out. Adding to our problems, found additional offences. We found a heap more trocar shell right through the bilges and underneath the water containers that we've moved. Ran right about a ton, possibly a ton and a half of trocar shell. The hidden catch has raised the stakes for the fishermen. It's about double what we found uh, in the aft hatch. So further evidence of the offence. Yeah. 
If found guilty, Danyanis and his crew could be fined tens of thousands of dollars, enough to put them out of business. How much cash are you carrying at this stage? It should be about five, six hundred dollars. At okay. Melbourne Airport, credit cards. No. Customs officers okay. are wondering how Bobby, an unemployed factory worker, will fund his 15-day courtship. Count the cash that you've got. Uh, in Australian or both? Both. I just want to see how much there is in there. $500. ATM card, what's the balance on that? About $505. So there's 500 left in, uh, on there and you're carrying about 600 in cash. And 477 to Walmart, what was it? Oh, that was a... Uh, this. Okay. That's your engagement ring, is it? Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> Does she know anything about it? You're a bit nervous. Is there a reason for it? Uh, yeah, because that's why I was meeting. <laughs> I'm never... You're very nervous? Yeah. Well, wouldn't you be? At Melbourne Airport, former supermodel Rachel Hunter is waiting to be stamped in. Today, it's all smiles, but not for Bobby. I usually have a shower every morning and everything, and I ain't had one yet, so I'm kind of tired. His blind pursuit of internet love has got immigration interested. At this stage, he's carrying $94 in US. Mm -hmm. um, he's got 500 Australian. Mm -hmm. He's got an engagement ring for a girl here that he's met on the internet. Mm -hmm. According to him, she is waiting outside. I'll explain to you what my major concern is here. Um, the visa that you currently hold is only intended for people that are coming here as tourists, okay, for a short term. If you're intending on marrying somebody here, honestly, my, my major concern is that you're actually going to try and stay in Australia, which is completely against the conditions of your visa. The other thing that concerns me is that you don't have work in the States, um, which, you know, in combination with your financial situation, then. I have to have the natural concern that you may be actually engaging in some sort of work while you're here to support yourself. At Sydney Airport, the verdict is in on Deborah's plea to re-enter the country. I think the cancellation has to proceed. Okay. Right. You comfortable with that? I'm comfortable, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Proceed to cancellation then? Yep. Now Alan has to break the news. Deborah, the decision has been made to cancel your visa. The visa was initially uh, granted to you invalidly because you were within Australia at the time of the grant. Uh, and you are subject to a three year exclusion period. Okay? Now, that can be waived in an overseas post, but it cannot be waived here at the border. The options now is that if we can get you on a flight out of Australia tonight, and you'll be taken from here directly up to the aircraft and placed on board the flight. If you're unable to make that flight tonight, you'll be held at the Immigration Detention Centre at Villawood until such time as a flight can be arranged for you. Is that her card to you? Yeah, that's a card to me. Put she must have bag. stuck it in my bag before I left. Back in yeah, customs, right. it seems oh, that love-struck Bobby work. has come that's, with some that's excess that's baggage. Still friends. That's my ex-wife. Oh, it's your ex-wife, okay. And how long have you been divorced? Uh, well, it's not really finalised yet. We've been separated uh, for I'd say about eight, nine months. And is that something that Trucity knows? She yeah. Knows, yeah. So can you legally actually get married to her? Or is that the reason this is not only... yet? Not That's yet. why I, there's no date set. <laughs> what does she That's do where, here? Uh, she works at Ford Company. She's Polynesian. And does she have children here? Is no. She, no. No. She's How single. How old is she? 29. Okay, what I'm going to do before I can actually let you go is I'm going to try and see if I can locate her outside, okay, just to basically confirm some of the things that you've said to me. Um, if I can't find her outside, then I'll try giving her a call. I was actually wondering if you just paid someone for me, uh, Miss Van Dyer. Miss Van Dyer. Miss Van Dyer. Yeah. Just a visitor. Okay, sure. Miss Van Dyer. Please go down the traffic. For Deborah, heartbreak. She'll be leaving. Will have been a seven hour drama for her and for us. Deborah, that's your ticket. Super. Right, we've got your boarding pass, which we will need to feed through to the airline. 
And that's your uh, itinerary? We do wonder what she's going back to. And I think she wonders too. You're going to have to call me back in about 10 minutes. Yep. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. You can't say goodbye to someone properly over the phone. You know? It's, you just can't. Did you come here on a working holiday visa? I came here on a working holiday visa, but oh. I actually re-entered on a, an ETA. But whoever I got the ETA is just fucked me out big time. Deborah has lodged a complaint against her migration agent. She has also applied for a fiancé visa. The three-year exclusion period can be waived under certain circumstances. The crew of Correo Bay has just made another alarming discovery. One of my crew members is an actual qualified biologist and he's seen a, a number of insects on board. He believes it pose a real quarantine problem to Australia. We've just been inside and the um, whole cabin seems to be quite swarming almost with um, mosquitoes and fruit fly. I don't know whether they carry malaria. It's about the last thing we want to sort of import into Australia for the sake of a fishing boat. And that's not all. The vessel also appears to be uh, contain a large quantity of Torito worm. Torito worm is a type of wood borer. All three insects are a real quarantine risk to the country. If that's the case, there's probably more evidence to uh, more value in destroying this vessel than taking it back to Australia. In Melbourne, Bobby's internet love to be appears to have stood him up. With no one to vouch for him, Bobby might not be led into Australia. Okay, no answer. Well, she's not outside, and that phone is switched off. So, just for clarification, you said that she wasn't sure as to exactly when you'd be coming, is that right? No, she knew when I was going to come, she didn't know if I was going to show up or not, because I kept saying one time I would, and then... Next time I was and um, Lane Ford, the manufacturing plant, and they've got no record of her working there. Does she work in a dealership? Or does she work for the... Uh, no, she worked for Ford, she said Ford Company. Uh, the phone number comes up negative, and I've had no luck identifying the, the female over. I've got a feeling that she hasn't given him the real name, because, like, the name's a little bit different. They're running checks on the numbers now. Okay. This is what's going to happen. On board Correo Bay. It is a final and, and dramatic sort of end. We are slipping the tow of the uh, vessel being towed. I uh, received uh, verbal approval about an hour ago to destroy the vessel. I've taken the decision that uh, we're going to actually destroy this vessel by fire because of the problems it poses uh, with the quarantine risk and the, uh, the risk of it foundering, becoming a navigational hazard. It's the upper number. Danyanis. Danyanis. Danyanis Lane. It's time to let Danyanis know, captain to captain. I told him that you can't just leave it floating, you have to burn it. And uh, he doesn't seem too prepared by us. Thank you. Trim It's going to go very soon. There it is. Well done, thank you. It's a sort of no-win situation. The vessel's the livelihood of the fishermen involved. By destroying their vessel, we're taking their livelihood away. When they do finally get home, they may have to work for another company to repay the vessel they've just lost. In Darwin, Danyanis was fined $2,500 for fishing illegally. The fine is payable only if he returns to Australia. Yeah, I'm broke, I'm hungry. Lovely day at Customs. We still can't locate her. I could probably do it a lot better than you could, though. Well, I'm good at finding people. 
That concerns me a little bit, to tell you the truth. Like in the city, it is so hard. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I get the impression that you're being honest with me, at least. I don't know if the situation between the two of you is quite what you think it is, okay, because the fact that she's not here and the fact that she has her mobile phone switched off doesn't exactly tell me like she's running into your arms, if you know what I mean. I'm going to let you through today, okay, purely on the basis that you've got that $500 Australian and that $500 US, okay, and that it'll hopefully get you through the couple of weeks that you're intending to be here. I feel sorry for the gentleman. I mean, she's not here, and I think he's quite disappointed that she's not here. He's got an engagement ring, and um, you know, I hope he does find her. There's no sure thing that the apples fall where they may. <laughs> Bobby couldn't find his internet love. He flew home with the engagement ring the next day. When he presented his passport at the line, the customs officer didn't like the look of the photograph compared to the person he had standing in front of him, wasn't sure if it was the same person. The man has flown in from Korea, but he's not going any further until his identity can be verified. Just have to examine the passport photograph. Oh. Hold your head up. Thank you. This is the passport, this is the photograph, and on here I have an image of the passenger, which I'll do a comparison of the two images. So I'll enlarge this image here and put them on a, a full-size paper and put them together. What I actually do is I'll look here and I'll look at the things like his, his eyes, his nose, his mouth, and how it all lines up together. Um, the shape of a person's ear is like a fingerprint. Everyone has a different shape and size he is. In the customs hall, one passenger is trying hard not to draw attention to himself. The guy came up to the uh, nothing to declare gate, and he had uh, a bag which is pretty, um, pretty much what a businessman would carry. Just looking at him through his appearance, he, he looked quite shabby, and he's trying to appear as a business type of. Person, traveller. Paul has uh, just arrived from Argentina on flight AR 1182. Who packed the bag? A colleague of mine, a friend of mine. A friend of yours. Do you have your friend's name? Uh, it is a Brazilian name. It is a Brazilian no, name. A friend of yours? It's a, not a friend, a colleague. Yeah. Somewhere I met. Yeah. How long ago did you meet him? About three to six months ago. And you trust him to pack your bags? Yeah, I've been trust each other. Yeah. yeah. Trust each other. Is this your blanket? No. It's not your blanket. Where did the blanket come from? I don't know. Yeah. Do you know what this is here? These are? I have no idea. No? no? It's your bag, isn't it? This is my bag, but yeah. I didn't pack it. Who packed it? Like I said, a colleague of mine. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea what that is. Back in immigration, Dave's facial analysis is taking shape. You cannot see the ears from this image here. And this one here, the ears are, are sticking away from them. Or sticking out. Here his ears could have been pinned back, but the earlobes are, are lower here on the face. The mouth is similar. We also have moles on this gentleman, the, the passport photograph, the moles on the face here. Yes, they can be removed. But the passport was only issued two months ago. I mean, he's actually wearing a different pair of spectacles as well. If you look at the top, it's got the egg shape. It comes down to a point where this one here, his face is actually more round. There's a number of characteristics here which tell me he's not the same person. Do you know what he was putting in your bag? Paul has some explaining to me. Huh? I put my clothing on my bed. I okay. may stuck the clothing at the bottom here, obviously. Yeah. No idea what that is. The suspicious packages concealed in his luggage are about to be x-rayed. What we've got here is um, a couple of statues that, uh, that were found in his baggage. Once we put them through the x-ray, um, we can see quite a uh, dense um, organic matter inside the statue itself and that's, uh, that indicates to us that there is um, an organic material inside that statue and it's quite a, quite a um, obvious anomaly. Either way, going down. Huh? The man with two faces has just seen Emma discover a second passport. 
You're an imposter. Do you understand that? This is actually his real passport um, that I found in his luggage when I did a baggage search. And when I was going through his address book here, he's got all Australian bank accounts, and all Australian bank numbers like Streamline accounts and Westpac and so forth. You know, that tells me he'd been here before under this name, but he hasn't been here on this document. There's no record of movement on this document. The verdict is also in on the first passport, the one he tried to enter on. This is the passport photograph, mm -hmm. and this is the passport photograph. As you can see, clearly there, there. The ears are out. Two different people. Definitely an imposter. I think you can call him an imposter. Thank you. The way I, I manoeuvre manoeuvre is different from other people. Formed a suspicion in our mind that there may have been a, um, an offence committed. In customs, Paul's about to find out how much trouble his friend has landed him in. We're just doing an iron scan analysis on the outside uh, packaging of uh, the statue. We'd like to confirm if the, it is actually narcotics in that statue or whether it is something else. What I'm going to do is do an analysis of the swab. What it does is it just picks up the iron scan particles from this machine, spits back what could be a narcotic substance, that's what we're looking for. You don't, you don't think that's a weapon? No. At Sydney Airport, Ali has a problem. Where did you purchase them? Thailand. Oh, OK. I asked them, I said, can I take this to Australia? And they said this. I mean, I wasn't trying to okay. Who did you ask? The shop owner. The shop owner. He's trying to convince customs officers that these <laughs> items are just holiday souvenirs. Just this question here, do you think they're weapons? No. You, I mean, don't, you don't think that's a weapon? No. You don't think this is a weapon? I wasn't going to use it as a... I was going to bring in it to okay, hang up on the wall. That's, that's yeah, it's a, a knife. That's a knife. Yeah. That's a weapon. I've seen that in Sydney. You can buy that in Sydney. It's a knife. It's just this, it says weapons of any kind. Yeah. You understand the English on this statement? Yes, I do, sir. Can you purchase the goods in Australia? I, I, you can purchase it from martial arts shop. You can? Yeah. Uh, whereabouts? From martial arts shop in Parramatta. I've seen these in a martial arts shop in Parramatta. Oh, right, OK. Sure. Can you purchase any of these? I don't know. OK. Have you tried to purchase any of these? No, I, I, I just saw them in a souvenir shop. They had them in Thailand. You exited the Green Gate, nothing to declare? Yes. In immigration, while a pack of Brumbies line up to be cleared, the Korean imposter has still not let on who he really is. I can't find the name he's travelled under last time. He had a couple of bank accounts, so I might try the names on the, that might be on those bank accounts. Ah, look, he's used, to, he's used his name phonetically. Yun Sung, but he's got spelt Y Yun, Y U N, and Yun Y O O N. And then Song, S O N G, as opposed to Sung, S U N G. That's what he's arrived under last time. That's him. Okay, that's why he didn't show me that passport, and that's why he's gone and got a new passport. Emma wants some straight answers now. English is all right. English is okay. Do you agree that the person in this photograph is not you? You think you're very good. Back in customs, yes, sir, Ali sure. has enough concealed weapons for a small martial arts army. Two star knives, oh, one okay. butterfly knife, one nunchuckers, and one, what do you call these, brass? Knuckle dusters. Face pusher into this. I'm going to caution you that you may have broken the law or committed an offence, OK? Well, does that mean I'm getting charged? No, no, well, I'm, I'm cautioning you. The caution is you don't have to say or do anything, but anything you do say or do may be used as evidence. Do you understand that? Simon has also ordered a complete baggage search. It's every time we search it out, we swab the insides of the bag, okay? Just let us know if you come into contact with any narcotics, okay? You haven't used any narcotics no. or what you've been away? Let's stop. No chance. It's not a super We've just got uh, a swab of the gentleman's toiletry bag. We just put it in the machine and we'll see if there's any traces of. Um, Narcotics on it. Who is this person? My brother. It's your brother. The Korean okay. imposter has um, finally confessed. Is he aware that you have his passport? He's back in Korea. Okay. In your baggage, I actually located another passport. Is that your passport? My passport. Your photograph in the passport? 
That's right. And you recently applied for that passport? Yes. Okay. When you were here in Australia last time, you changed the letters in your name? You changed anything. This is the spelling when you came last time. Yun Song. That's right. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's slightly different to the passport that you have in your bag. That's right. According to my computer, last time you were in Australia, you arrived on the 19th of May, 1995. Right. Okay. You arrived on a visitor visa. Yeah. Okay, you were only allowed to stay three months. That's right. You only left in November last year. Mm -hmm. So you were here for eight years in Australia. From 1995 until November last year. For Paul, the drug test is not good news. Okay, what we've got here is a really high ready for cocaine. But Paul's still claiming the statues aren't his, that someone else packed his bag for him. You do not have to say or do anything, but anything you do say or do may be used as evidence. Do you understand that? I understand that. Well, it's, uh, it's bubble wrap there. Just try and take it off the um, off the paint, but don't um, don't wreck the. Still wet. What does it smell like? Uh, some sort of. Yeah, you can, you can smell the um, you can smell the paint on it, can't you? Yes. Where's the concealment? Down here. In the main part. Yeah. Have a look at the plug underneath there. Is it soft in there? Where did you get the statues from? When was the last time you opened the bag? Uh, must have been when I left uh, Sao Paulo. And what were you doing over there? I was coming over here to Australia. The statues have tested positive for traces of cocaine. So you came from from where? Sao Paulo. From Brazil? Brazil, yeah. From, yeah. from South Africa originally? South Africa, yeah. To Brazil, yeah. to here. So what were you doing going through Brazil to get to here? Why didn't you come direct from South Africa well, to here? Ticket, ticket was bought for me, through that way. Who bought the ticket for you? A friend of mine, the same friend. Same friend who? Sao Paulo, yeah. So you hadn't opened this bag since you left South no, Africa, is that right? No. This bag was Pack for me in Sao Paulo. For you? You didn't yes. pack it yourself? I didn't pack it. I didn't pack it with me. Okay. These clothes are laid out on my bed. Yeah. So you pack it for me. And I come out and find this stuff in here. At the other end of the airport, our young yeah. lovers are drug free. <laughs> but Ali is not off the hook just yet. I've got two stone eyes in fact. Butterfly knife, um, knuckle dusters, and uh, nunchuckers. And nunchuckers. Just like enter the room. <sighs> Thanks, Kieran. <laughs> Ali has just finished yeah, a taped uh, record there, of you interview. Put all your video tapes, audio tapes, all the paperwork. Okay then. Yeah, my boyfriend got a few things that you can't get, like like kind of weapons and stuff, which I really hated and I didn't want him to get, but he got it anyway. Pretty so I'm kind of happy that. to... <laughs> Nunchuckers, knife and ninja stars, which I brought back as uh, ornaments or souvenirs from Thailand. Now they're saying I could be charged for it, so it sucks, but what can you do? They're just saying it to make the... Importation of weapons. The weapons were seized by customs. Ali was convicted of importing weapons and fined six thousand dollars. Where are you staying here? Uh, I've got the address. Uh, at the, at the what hotel is it? Oh, it's at the hostel. That's right. You got friends here? No, no friends. But Paul could sure use one now. Those suspicious statues were packed, he says, by an acquaintance in Brazil. What were you in Brazil for? About two days. Only two days in Brazil. Were yeah, you, two, two were you, were you, did you intend to go to Brazil in the first place? No, I'm on the other holiday. Go through Brazil, you see. I've always wanted to come here. Zulu the Labrador will determine if Paul's a legitimate tourist or not. She knows how to find drugs. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. She's just uh, just reacted to um, looks like about six or seven statues. Not an easy easy concealment um, because. The, the amount of odour coming out would have been very minimal, uh, but she's, yeah, she's done super. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't hit anybody. 
I didn't rob the bank. That may be so, but Yoon has broken the law. Eight years living illegally in Australia. Is that correct? That, that long? That long. When you left Australia, you would have been advised that you were subject to an ex exclusion period from Australia, that you're excluded from coming back to Australia for three years. You know that. I'm going to serve you a notice of intention to cancel your visa. If a decision is made to cancel your visa, you will be refused immigration clearance. If you give me a couple more days, okay. See you then. Have a think about what you want to say. I, I give up everything. Everything. I will never come back here. Also. I'm legally obliged to give you time to think about it. Yoon's a businessman. He wants to strike a deal with immigration. He's got 10 minutes to make his case. Just wait there. It, he would have to have fairly compelling or compassionate reasons that would turn the decision in his favour. He said he'd been here before and he'd overstayed. So. When, did he say when he last left? Um, he said, it, well, it went from eight years to five years to three years to one year. <laughs> uh, but now, confirming on the actual system, it actually shows he only left last November. So he stayed illegally until 2003? Yeah, and he attempted to enter Australia illegally on a fraudulently obtained passport. Yoon is facing a possible three-year exclusion from Australia. Officers have discretion to let him in, but his story must be good. If you've got any compassionate or compelling reasons why that I should not cancel your visa, then you need to tell me now. What I want to do, actually, was to buy, you call it, cow hide or raw hide, whatever it is. We process to make shoes. Is there anything else you want to add? I don't know. Uh, it could be cowhide or it could be other stuff too. Okay. Um, but it's all financial. It's not financial, actually. There's something it's Yoon is hiding from Emma. It's secret and it's personal. What we're going to do now is we're going to take you to an interview room over here. We're going to contact the Australian Federal Police and they'll come out here and um, they'll have a talk to you, okay? The police will determine whether Paul's a drug runner or an innocent traveller betrayed by a friend. What was the, the friend's name in Packer Bag? He's got a Brazilian name. I don't understand his Brazil people's names. Name. Brazilian names. I don't understand people's names. In South Africa, was it? Or was no, he in Sao Brazil? Paulo. During his interviews, Paul confessed he was travelling on a false British passport. The man's real name is William. He is a South African maintenance worker and father of two children. The seven porcelain statues contained 3.4 kilograms of cocaine, worth $442,000. William was found guilty of possessing a false passport and importing cocaine. Yoon has failed to persuade immigration to let him in. The passport you entered on today was not yours. Yeah, you keep saying that, but yes, that, that's true. And you overstayed your visa last time. What Yoon hasn't yeah, so told Emma visa. is that members of his family are living in Australia. You still didn't uh, abide by the conditions of that let's, visa. Let, let's put it this way. Allow me a couple more days here, then I'll go back to Korea. Really think hard. Okay. I'm informing you your the visa has been cancelled. Okay, I'm now cancelling your visa. Okay. You are no longer the holder of a valid visa and you have been refused immigration clearance and you will be removed as, from Australia as an unlawful non citizen. Right, okay. I'm virtually tied up. Okay. You are detained until such a time as your removal. You go on gate 20, are you? When do I fly? Three o'clock today. Take off time for the flight is 3 p.m. this afternoon. But he still won't take no for an answer. I told you I want to go back to you for this time, right? Yeah, and I told you I cancelled your visa and I'm not allowing you entry. Yoon flew back to Korea. Investigations by immigration later uncovered Yoon's secret. His travel's extremely unusual. He's on a um, 
short stay visitor visa which allows him three months. So he's come in July, left in October and now a matter of two weeks later he's here again. We sometimes call that a visa run. It can be someone who's just gone overseas to reset their visa so they can come in again for another three months. Sometimes what that can mean is that they, they may be working here illegally. There are around 50,000 illegal people in Australia at any time. Some are here for extended holidays, some for work and some for love. We found a, an exercise book in his, um, his luggage. It looks like he's written a letter. We don't know who to yet or where they are, but it says, Hi Leanne, how are you? I hope you are fine, sweetheart. I don't want to pay money to get married, but I am willing to marry for good and for life. Please help me. So I guess we need to find out who the Leanne is and where she's located. What was this one about? This is the girl which I met in 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 Burgos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? In Australia? Yeah. yeah. What what do you mean here? Mm -hmm. I don't want to pay money to get married. Because I, I had some fun with her. Mm -hmm. And then she trying to brainwash me. Mm -hmm. And I went back to Singapore. Then I you know told her that forget about it. Officers are not convinced, but Azana is telling them the truth. They think this passenger is hiding a lot more than his love life. You haven't ever been in trouble with the police in Singapore? Airlines only make money when their jets are in the air, so any delay that causes a plane to stay on the ground has to be for a very serious reason, like an unclaimed package. Just had a phone call, there's a plane that's just landed from Asia. Uh, we've got a suspicious package that the cleaners have found and we're just going up there to investigate. I wonder if you can bring your dogs up to the gate. We've got a suspicious package uh, on an aircraft and I want the old dogs to run over it. The package could be dangerous and no one will touch it. The trained dog will confirm its contents. Yeah, we just got a call to uh, check out a package up on the aircraft, so we'll go have a look and see how we go. Depending on the dog's reaction, officers will decide how to handle this package. Good. And all that training has paid off. It's narcotics. Dog oh, boy. Good boy. Australian immigration laws are amongst the tightest in the world. Were you ever in prison or...? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. drugs. Yeah? Yeah. When was that? Uh, I came on... The last one was... Tony isn't happy with the information he's gathering from Azana, and he yeah. thinks yeah. immigration should take a closer look. Always I go in for two years, two years, three years, two years, you know. He's just told me that he's been in and out of prison quite a number of times for drug-related offences, and he hasn't declared any criminal convictions on his uh, incoming passenger card. So we'll have to refer him to immigration and see whether they decide to grant him entry or not. Hello, sir. My yeah. name's Greg, Bob from Immigration. Yeah, you departed Australia on the 15th of October. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. How long were you in Australia on that trip? About two How and a half months. Two and a half months. Mm -hmm. And was that your first time to Australia? Yeah, first time. So Always. this is now your second time to Australia? Yeah. And what did you do, apart from going to the Gold Coast, what things did you do on that trip? Oh, just move around, you know, drinking every day. Do you have criminal convictions? Yeah. You do? Okay. This is the incoming passenger card. Mm -hmm. It's a legal document, a legal declaration, and you've indicated where it says, do you have any criminal convictions you've put no? Can I ask you why you've falsified your declaration today? See, I maybe I did a mistake by marking it, but if I, if I, if I put it no, mm -hmm. I swear I tell you all the way no. What's the point of putting in no and telling you yes? This is very, this is very serious yes. because it's a legal declaration and if you have criminal convictions and you say, in this case you say it's a mistake, but whether it's a mistake or not, you've said no to criminal convictions and you've just admitted to me that you do have some. What I need to do now is I need you to do, go up to our office upstairs, to the immigration office, 
and I'm going to have to interview you about these convictions, and you're going to have to be upfront, honest, totally honest with me, oh, and tell me exactly what they are. Okay, no problem. All sir. right, and if they're minor offences that are of no harm to the Australian community, we'll let you into Australia. If they're anything more severe, then I have to make an assessment of how severe they are, and then you'll be told whether you'll be allowed into Australia or not. Duke de Labrador has earned his keep today. He's just identified narcotics. Yeah, we had a good result. Uh, dogs found what looks like to be a body pack. Um, sometimes passengers, when they get scared, they'll take it off, throw it in the bin. And um, yeah, good result, good boy. Australian Customs. Yeah, mate, just, just to let you know, mate, that um, we've just had a suspected body pack that we found on board an aircraft. The tarmac team are currently with the package and we've got it in an interview room at the moment. A body pack is exactly what its name suggests, a bag holding drugs worn around the body. And this body bag contains a large amount of illegal narcotics. There's a fair bit there. Um, yeah, there's pantyhose, so we would assume that uh, they were either wearing the pantyhose or they've put the pantyhose over the package to make it uh, less susceptible to it being felt by others. Because when we're looking at the package itself, it's, it's taped in plastic, so you don't want it uh, crinkling and, and making noises. It could be just for their own sort of, I guess, comfort. Having it in a stocking obviously makes it feel a lot better and far more comfortable. The only way we can actually carry on the investigation from here on in, from customs side of things, is to provide as much information to the Federal Police as possible. The AFP at the moment will most likely take it to their forensics people. I don't know what their sort of uh, records have, or you know, even if they do find somebody, there's a possibility that we will catch whoever this person is that have brought these uh, goods into the country. Dog. Illegal Where? items can be picked up on x-ray or by scent. These trays are letter class mail. They have about four and five hundred articles in each one. The dogs, because of the sensitivity of their nose, can detect what we can't on x-ray. Good boy. Find it. Oh, good boy. Blue, an ex-pound dog, is a mailroom specialist, trained to find plants, animals, soil and seeds. All I'm doing now, because I'm fanning it, and that releases a bit more odour. Yes, yes, good boy, good dog. By failing to mark his incoming passenger card correctly, Azana has committed a federal offence. As I've explained to him down in the baggage hall, the incoming passenger card is a legal declaration. <laughs> Technically, we can refuse him entry just on that basis alone. But in the interests of natural justice and being fair to him, uh, he said it was a mistake. I explained to him that mistake or otherwise we still have to get the information from him and make an assessment and a decision on that basis. But generally what we find is that people haven't declared in the past because obviously they don't want to have any hassles, they don't want to be stopped from coming in, they want to enjoy their holidays or for whatever reason want to escape their previous life. Whatever it is, but we have to make an assessment to be fair to the Australian public and the Australian community. Now just have a seat. In many cases, officers get a lot of information just from physical appearances. The situation I explained to you earlier. Actually, we are aware that um, most Singaporeans don't have tattoos, so somebody with tattoos would be someone that we would look at and have a closer look and maybe talk to them about criminal history. I did nothing wrong to be nervous. I'm not a terrorist, you know. Just get your weight here for a moment. Mm -hmm. He might not be a terrorist, but if Azana is seen as a threat to our community, he'll have to holiday somewhere else. Sydney Customs Hall. Fake cards they've come down for, won't they? Not Officers have found some suspicious looking credit cards in the luggage of a passenger who arrived from China. Yeah, but look, that doesn't even move. The wing's supposed to move. Pretty and that hologram is supposed to change colour. I want to get going on this. I want to get him in the room and I want to start it. Right. Okay, Pete, let's move him. Mr Chong is taken away from the hall that to was. be questioned further. Shit. I think all these are all fake. 
counterfeit credit cards. So far, I think he said that he bought them in a pub. 14. So, say each one of them has got 10,000 on it, there's $140,000 worth of stuff they could rip off. Credit card fraud costs Australia close to $200 million a year. So customs are not treating this case lightly. Can you contact the feds, please? The time is now 7.50am. You've been referred back by customs because you've admitted to them uh, that you have spent time in prison, OK? Because you have then admitted to It's time to, me to decide have, Azana's fate. Uh, can he prove that his past um, is not as dark as it seems? When was the first time you were charged with consumption of heroin, with drug charges? 1981. The first time? And when was the last time? You said there were five separate uh, occasions. The last one was 1998. And in total for the previous four charges, how much time would you say you served? Can you recall? Uh, Fif that was 15. 15 years on the previous four charges. And I'm going to be honest with you because I want you to be honest with me, because it is uh, not looking good for you. Okay, this this amount of prison time, and based on the visa that you hold, okay, immigration yeah. officers now need to make a decision. Just if you can help yourself to more water, you can have a seat outside if you like. There's nothing to be nervous, Mike. You know why? Because after I never commit any crime over here. You know what I mean? Have you ever wondered why quarantine is so concerned with those wooden items you bring back from holidays? Well, besides the tiny bugs you can't see, sometimes there's an even bigger problem hiding. This passenger just arrived from Southeast Asia. He picked up a couple of souvenirs along the way, including this attractive wooden statue. But that's not all he picked up. Cockroaches pose a health risk. So this traveller and his interesting wooden statue are allowed to pass through the border, minus one stowaway. The quarantine officer just referred the statue to us because, um, in her opinion, it was rather heavy and that. So we x-rayed it, the x-ray was inconclusive. We opened it up and I was going to give it a swab and see if it came up positive for anything and it's basically a big lump of wood and there was a little critter inside. Thank you for that. In the Brisbane mail room, Dog. Richie, can I get up that one, please? Good boy. Damn. Blue has hit on a suspicious boy. letter from overseas. Yep. yep. OK, Bluey's just um, indicated on this letter that was in the tray. And inside it we have some dried plant material, some flower petals. There can be a number of problems with it, depending on what the plant is, whether or not it has seeds. Good boy whether or not there's a disease risk associated with that particular plant, whether or not it's even identifiable. Good boy. The petals will be disposed of while Blue claims his reward. Yes, good boy. This is a seizable item purely and simply because we can't identify it. When you can't identify it, you don't know what the disease risks associated are, so hence it's a seizable item. Because you can't see that on an x-ray, there's absolutely no way to detect it. That's one of the risks that we run with letter class, so this is why Dogs are so valuable to our, scre our screening process. Feds have been contacted as well. Yeah. There's cups in oh, the Customs officers are holding a man suspected of carrying false credit cards. We have a gentleman down here off CX101, uh, Hong Kong passport, surname of Chong, C-H-O-N-G. Uh, what he's got is 14 look like counterfeit credit cards. He's got Visa and MasterCard and um, a couple of others. He's basically said that he bought them in a pub. And it seems Mr Chong may not be travelling alone. Earlier, officers searched another suspicious passenger. This guy this morning had a couple of walker talkies in his bag. Couldn't explain it. So he's been waiting outside all morning. He's since met up with two others. Um, we're not sure whether they've been searched or not. And it looks like when they've 
utilise their mobile outside. His is rung, so they could be waiting for him. He's got three numbers on his phone, that's it. Customs have been keeping an eye on the men all morning, suspecting there's a connection between them. And those mobile phone calls have given them the link they need to make a move. All right. You've got one, two. I'll go with you. You know what they look like? All right. Well, Rob and I will walk out this way, and we'll just start walking down that way. Yeah, you go first. Yeah. Just why are these men so desperately trying to contact our credit card fraudster? Back in Melbourne, Azana arrived from Singapore with a history of drug convictions and has spent 15 um, years behind bars. What the go is, um, he ticked no to convictions on his uh, IPC. He stated that he's got uh, five mm. separate charges for the consumption of heroin. He's only just been out of prison for seven months. No, I agree. It's, um, it's too serious to not, um, to not refuse him entry, actually. Mm -hmm. I have decided to cancel your visa okay. under Section 1161B of the Act because you are in breach of the condition that says you must not have criminal convictions tailing 12 months or more. Mm -hmm. You need to be aware that you are not going anywhere until no, such time as you go back to Singapore. <laughs> In the arrivals hall at Sydney Airport, customs are talking to three men who have been acting suspiciously all morning. Another man has been found with fake credit cards. Could all these men be connected? Customs believes so. We'll have to go to the other end. Take a couple up there, because we only got these two. Shush, shush. Anxious, nervous. Um, we're really wanting to get out of the airport in a way, but obviously waiting for their full friend and they got more nervous and more anxious as they realised his flight had landed and he wasn't coming out, so that's when we made a move to go and get them. One of the men, Mr Leong, is taken straight into an interview room for questioning. Why not? While the other two men are questioned outside. Why didn't your friend come and pick you up? Maybe working. Maybe working? Yes. OK, oh, okay. to work. So he didn't tell you he'd be working? So <laughs> what's the problem? You just just, oh, just, just asking just, questions. Yeah, sure is, uh, we just, just asking questions. Yeah, no, I appreciate ah. that. So just asking questions, that's all. Just to make sure you are tourists. Okay, okay. okay. It's a slow process, but inside, officers have struck gold. This is a fake. This is a, a counterfeit Hong Kong passport in the same name of the 30 credit counterfeit credit cards we have in the room there. Basically, this one was very easy to pick up. Not only is Mr. Leong carrying a fake passport, He's also got a stash of fake credit cards, just like his associate, Mr. Chong. QF44 from Heathrow has just touched down at Sydney Airport. Custom staff are used to seeing famous faces. At first glance, this appears to be Luciano Pavarotti. But is he? There's the three tenors, there we are. Yeah. 30 quid, three tenors. <laughs> Colin and Mark have travelled 24 hours from London just for a weekend of impersonating their heroes. On a Gucci place. <laughs> <laughs> Only the best Italian. I know you just have those suits anyways. <laughs> and I go to my local market get most of my stuff. <laughs> While customs officer Nathan realises these are not the real tenants, he's going to let them off with a song. Once a jolly swag man can buy a billabong under the shade of a moonlit tree. Are you trying to get us kicked out of Australia? <laughs> You're succeeding. In customs, the game's up for two Chinese passengers. This second gentleman will be up on criminal charges, definitely. And um, we're going to call the Australian Federal Police back to take the second gentleman. And um, we have two, two now, which are. Be de will be detained. But Customs still has concerns about the other two men. Aaron, when you go out, can you explain that they've been imp implemented now criminally and not just immigration yeah, uh, problem? What we're thinking at the moment is they're all connected. 
with the cards, yep. but uh, immigration also feel that it's something bigger to this, so uh, just through their, their movements and what they've done. So now they are referred to immigration. My friend, can you come with me? Immigration wants to speak to you. Because of their association with Mr. Leong and Mr. Chong, the two men were detained by immigration, refused entry and sent back to Hong Kong. Mr. Leong and Mr. Chong were each in possession of 35 fake credit cards with an estimated street value of $280,000 and each had a counterfeit passport. They both pleaded guilty and had been sentenced to 15 months imprisonment. Customs has a delicate problem on its hands. Thomas has just flown in from Prague and, to put it mildly, he's on the nose. Just before he got his passport stamped, he pulled his pants down to his ankles and adjusted himself. What's more, he's travelled halfway around the world without any luggage. Now, you're here for a holiday? Yes, for 10 days. Do you have any clothes? Where's your clothes? Oh. Nothing else in your checked-in baggage? What do you want to do in Australia? Can you tell me anything that you'd like to see? You want to see the... I don't understand. Do you want to see the famous things here? Yes, the big, yes, yes. Yeah? Hyde Park, yes. Hyde Park. You have cash money? No money. Yeah, no money. Yes, I have money, yes. How much money? Uh, five hundred dollars. Anything in your pockets? Yes. There's no law against travelling light, but his passport looks dodgy. He's got a visa in his passport that doesn't have a name on it. Meanwhile, AR 1182 is in from Argentina. Passengers are being screened behind the immigration line for drugs. The dogs just come up to this uh, particular passenger and basically just stiffed him for about a second and then just gave a very, very strong sit response. So that's an indication to us that there's narcotics either on their body or in their bags. This is the last thing Oscar needs right now. Your mother was sick. Yeah. Okay. You went to visit her? Yeah, no. in an ankle bay, so hey. Did you eat anything on the plane? Yeah. What did you have? Uh, I have the lot because I was very hungry. And he's kept a little memento from his flight. Yeah, that's from the air, and he cannot remove it from the aircraft. An x-ray will reveal if he has anything else tucked away. Two screws put in the uh, place of the bag, uh, maybe for reinforcement or something. I want to know why it's, it's happening. You can tell from here, that's uh, one of the runners on the bottom of the bag. All bags have two runners. There's no runner on this side. The runner on this side has one, two, three screws, and plus another one up here. And uh, it's obvious that this one's been taken off. What's strange is, look at this, the visa, it's got no name on it. I've never seen that before. Thomas has some explaining to do. Because usually, I'm assuming they write in there, but either they haven't written it in there or it's a bullshit visa, wasn't it, sir? How yeah. much money has he got? Well, he reckons $500. We're just going to have a talk to immigration. Come with me. Hi, oh, Ken. Go on. Mate, I'm wondering if you could have a look at this person for me. He's here for 10 days. He's a Czech national. Not got too many funds on him at all. I want to see the town, yeah, the Hyde Park, and so, yes, yes. Where did you um, first notice this bloke? Just after the duty free. He just decided to adjust, adjust himself and um, tuck himself in, but his pants were around his ankles. That's basically... Concern, isn't it? Yeah. Thomas looks more like a tramp than a tourist, here for 10 days without so much as a change of clothes. Just ask him and he indicated he'd like to go to the bathroom to refresh and wash up, which I think is a good idea. You can close the door. Thomas says he only needs to wash once a week. Michael begs to differ. I don't want. You don't want it? No. He went to the toilet, he stood there, looked at me, and then I looked at him and we just had an awkward moment together and then he... I. I'll speak to him in a minute. No, um, matey, no cigarette. No, no cigarette. Here. Back in the customs hall. To the base under there, which is a different colour to that. The base there is a greyer. You can see the eight squares one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oscar's sports bag appears to have been altered. If it was a normal bag, it wouldn't have any uh, different compartments there. It'd be just one uh, slab. The base of the bag, made of cardboard or uh, wood, uh, you can see the distinction between the bag and the base down the middle there. So I'd say the bag was reconstructed. 
and uh, the bags were put in there. What, what's happening? What's the problem? Okay, my officer just told me that there could be a concealment in this bag. Okay. I've, I've just taken yep. an x-ray of that bag yeah. and it looks like there's something in the bottom of it, okay? Yep. Caution you. So I must caution you, you do not have to say or do anything. Anything you do say or do may be used in evidence. Do you understand that? In immigration, Thomas's bad habits have landed him in more trouble. Yes. You can't smoke in here. Yes, uh, I'm, 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 I'm afraid, yes, I'm afraid. Yes. We'll get someone to speak to you. Hello. Hello. I just want to ask Thomas a few questions. Okay. Where are you staying while you're staying in Sydney? At Hotel Una Capitol Square. Do you have a confirmed booking there? Mate, tam zamluveni. Ano, mám, mám tam zamluveno sedm nocí. Yes, I booked seven nights. Do you have an itinerary? Uh, no, I just want to have a look at the city and then just uh, go for a short trips. Uh. How much money have you brought with you? I have exactly. Five hundred US, okay. No credit cards at all? No. I am retired or on a pension. Can I just ask you, Thomas, why you're travelling very light? Moy is back from Vietnam with what appears to be excess baggage. When I first noticed him, he was up near the finger just getting off the plane. In this gentleman's case, I was primarily interested in his calves, which were bulging. So how long have you been away from him? Oh, five weeks. Five weeks? Yeah. When we spoke to him, he started sweating, became very flushed, appeared quite nervous. How did you get so long off work? Yeah, I'm going holiday. The holiday? Yeah. What's this one for? You have a sore stomach? Yeah. Ah. What's the matter with it? Huh? What's the matter with it? We've taken uh, samples of the gentleman's baggage and off his wallet. If he's been in contact with any narcotics of any kind, those particles we're going to analyse in this machine. You have ulcer or what? Yeah, yeah. This one, I'm drinking and eating, you know what? Ah. Yeah, before I... That one's actually negative. Because of the flight, the major narcotics we get off that is heroin. And this machine, you need to actually run the sample twice so it burns hot enough to get that. Thank you, Thompson. Are you sure you've got no baggage, no suitcase? No, uh, really. That's all. If I Thomas have. is just a drifter, he's drifted an awfully long way. From Prague to Sydney with just $500 and the shirt on his back. <laughs> what if you need some more money? How are you going to fund your stay here? No, that, that will be enough. Že to nepotřebuju. Yeah, I don't need anything. Because I don't need anything. Yeah, 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 I Okay. All right. The All right. hotel checks out. Just. He's covered for seven days out of ten. Have you seen that? But there's still the question of his passport. That means he was unsuccessful in this visa application. That's from the US Embassy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He's got a visa in here also for South America, which he never used. Yeah. And he never saw the Americans it. in September, and then he saw us. Hang on. There's something missing here. Proof positive. Hai Moi has had some sort of contact with drugs. Before, the officer had a little a wand. They did a, a test. The test that we did shows us that you've been exposed to narcotics. It doesn't mean that we think you use any drugs or anything like that. It just means that your stuff has been exposed to it. Of more concern is the rash that suddenly appeared on his arms. You haven't been, been using any drugs of any kind? Like any, any narcotics of any kind? Like illegal drugs, like cocaine or heroin, things like that. Yeah, no, 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 no nothing like yeah, that. No. But because we have got a positive reading, we need to have a good look through. So, what's the matter with your stomach? Too many uh, here and why? Yeah. He apparently feels quite sick, which is an indicator for us. He may have something internally as well. 
Back in immigration, Thomas's papers are not in order, and neither is Thomas. But a record search shows the visa to be valid. It was issued in Austria. When Vienna issued the visa, they ne never actually saw, saw Thomas. So they've just issued the visa and sent it back to the, um, the travel agent in Prague. But that doesn't explain the condition the Prague tourist arrived in. Thomas is a mess. I'm not satisfied about the issue of the funds. Uh, someone on pension can purchase an airline to get around the world, um, not carry yet any luggage, um, have $500 in cash, and he can't explain how he can access his funds. If he can't come up with a satisfactory yep. answer, uh, I think that'll be grounds for cancellation. We'll just take an iron scan of the bag and see if we can tell what it is. In customs, Oscar is lost for words. Do you know what's be? inside the bag? When, what? Now, nothing. When you say, I pack up my bag, I put my stuff in close. Uh, the swap was taken from the gentleman's hold luggage. Nothing else. Okay. Should be a new bag. Sorry? It should be a new bag. That bag is new? At Sydney Airport, while Elle McPherson and son Flynn wait to claim their bags, Oscar is claiming ignorance about the contents of his bag. The eyes can result. He wants to find out the result. Yeah. It's positive. It's positive. For cocaine. But, uh, yeah. Can be. Sorry? Can be. Thank you. Yeah, remember this officer cautioned you that you do not have to say or do anything unless you wish to do so, okay? Anything you do say or do may be used in evidence. Do you understand again? I don't understand, sir. In this... I, I'm just cautioning you again. You do not have to say or do anything, but anything you do say or do I may be say, used in evidence. This is you, the only stuff we Listen to me. Bag. Listen to me. Do you understand my caution? Yeah. <laughs> Just metres away, High Moy's bag has also tested positive for traces of cocaine. All we're doing at the moment is just looking for a uh, method of concealment, which can be inside handles of bags. Some people unscrew them and in, well, slide heroin, cannabis, cocaine. Uh, in this gentleman's case, he's had uh, readings for cocaine. The X-ray is inconclusive, but there's enough suspicion to dig deeper. Recently. Um we had a concealment and nothing was revealed on the actual x-ray itself and we used a um, method such as just been used and we found that there was a small amount of heroin inside the frame. Despite the reading for cocaine, Tony's still searching for heroin. Vietnam is a source country for opium poppy. He is of interest for a variety of reasons. What do you mean? What type of a... Meanwhile, Oscar isn't wild about the attention he's receiving. If Paris the sniffer dog sits, Oscar's in trouble. Good girl! Good dog! Good girl! Are you carrying any other narcotics on your body? I don't carry narcotics. Okay. I don't need to carry narcotics. Yeah. Okay, so you don't have anything on your body? I am, I am not. Okay. We're oh, taking you to a room now, okay? We've done further investigations and uh, there's a very good chance that he could be carrying drugs internally in his stomach, either swallowed or stuffed. So um, we're at the moment um, about to obtain consent to see if uh, he'll agree to an, ex uh, an internal examination. Oscar agreed to an internal examination. He was drug free. But the sports bag contained 1.7 kilograms of low grade cocaine worth $550,000. Moy is a puzzle. His bag was scanned for heroin, then tested positive for cocaine. 
from Vietnam we don't generally get cocaine, it's usually heroin, so that doesn't fit in with a normal thing that we're looking for. Even so, they still need answers. The test has come back positive for cocaine again. Can you explain that? No, no. No? Yeah, no. Is it, how long have you had that bag for? Did I'm you bad. borrow from a friend or family member? No, no, my bag. It's your bag, but you had it for one year. The bag is clean. If there are drugs, they're hidden somewhere else. Back in immigration, Thomas is in dire need of a shower. Now, Thomas, can I ask you, a, a, you might consider a personal question. We were just a, a little bit concerned about the smell and it might be a little bit, bit unhygienic. No, I don't know anything about anything like this. This is <laughs> no, a very just... pleasant trip. Oh, OK. Well, it's a little bit something like your... Yeah, I'm well, very yeah. satisfied. He's only got the clothes on his back at the moment. Mm -hmm. He hasn't got any other clothing with him. Is, is he going to buy any other clothing at all? Uh, so you're just going to stay for the next six or seven days in the same clothes that you have now? Yeah, I always change a shirt once a week. Well, the shirt might last for 10 days, maybe, but the money in his pocket won't. Do you have access to any money when you get back to Prague? I've got enough money when I get home to, to get my uh, a meal and get home, and then I can come back and take the money out of the uh, savings bank. Can you be suspended at 10 5 hours? Thomas is fighting a battle with immigration. The Czech tourist has arrived virtually empty-handed for a 10-day holiday. I know he's got a package booked, but that doesn't mean he's booked it. Yeah. And he Maybe he would have had some luggage. Maybe he's got no luggage. Nothing. And yeah. he doesn't even know how much money he's got in his bank account. And a mm. check pension is not very much anyway. No. Well, I'll give him a notice of intention to consider... So, and see what, say, say, and see, see what he says. See what he says. Yeah. Now, Thomas, yes. I'm going to give you what is called a, a notice of intention to consider cancelling your visa because we don't think you're a genuine tourist here and because you don't have enough funds to support yourself while you're here. He says he's an invalid pensioner. He says he doesn't have any friends or family. It's likely that he'd become a consular case. That is, someone who's lost, bewildered, um, out of his depth in Australia. I'll come back in 10 minutes and you can give me a reason why we shouldn't cancel your visa, okay? Well, I can tell you right now. What I guess you do is you put your arms out for me. Get legs apart like that. Hi Moy is being patted down for drugs. Nothing. But with Hai Moi looking unwell, yeah, great. there's great. one more place to search. The officer told me that you're feeling sick in the stomach. You're not feeling too well, but your stomach is upset. Please. For these ones, for your stomach. You feel sick? I don't understand. You don't understand? He was telling our officer here how he felt sick, and now he's not understanding what I'm saying. I'm saying exactly the same thing. The concern is the uh, possible uh, concealment of uh, Drugs yeah. internally. Spine scan readings, even though we're not what we're looking for, he still can't explain them. It's um, positive what? here and positive there, so... Yeah. We might go into a, one of the rooms here and sit down and have a, a little bit more of a talk. OK, I, look, we, we see you, you look like you are unwell. You know, we have many officers here, we all think you are, um, you are sick. Sometimes people, if they eat drug, are yeah. sick. Hi Moy's story checks out. The only thing he's carrying are bruises from a holiday mishap. From what he told us in there, the explanation for the, you know, the injuries on him and what's happened, he was quite free and um, showing us exactly, um, you know, he's been in a motorbike accident. You know, his behaviour just wasn't consistent with what we would um, expect with an um, internal concealment. Well, from his accident and the, the heat rash that he had, that yeah. explains why he was hot. The pallor. And the, the face was red and the whole had the blotches all over the body. On to the next one. Customs officers speculate that Hai Moy had unwittingly come into contact with US dollar bills.
Now, Thomas, could you give me some reasons why we shouldn't cancel your visa? Thomas stands to lose a lot. Obviously, the airfare and the pre-booked accommodation, but it's going to hit someone like him particularly hard because he says he's an invalid pensioner. As a first of all, my return ticket is valid in one week's time. Yeah, that's my only reason. And I ask, is there any other reason? He said, no, of course, that's it. Immigration is not convinced Thomas can support himself for the duration of his stay. His visa is cancelled. He's going back to Prague. We'll be going out this afternoon at uh, 4.15. What was that? All right, okay. well, can be helped. Well, I accept you. But the plane won't take him anywhere until he freshens up. We're going to have to get some towels and toiletries and clothing because he needs a wash and a change of clothes. He can't go on a plane the way he is. Here's the shower, OK? Yes. Now how to use? Yes. So we, we will wait out here for you. When you finish, you knock, knock yes, the door, OK? Yes, yes. I don't think he used the soap. Tons of soil in between the toes. The smell is absolutely irritating. It must have been years without a wash. Thomas arrived in Prague the following day. He hopes to return to Sydney sometime in the future. Looks the can be deceiving. No, 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 look, <laughs> most people actually carry narcotics, don't have ponytails and that sort of stuff. The problem is his passport. While immigration takes a closer look, Daryl claims it's just water damaged. It was in the car. It slipped out, man. It slipped under the seat. I didn't see it. Oh, okay. I didn't realise it and it rained in. Yeah, okay. Because he had his window smashed from somebody breaking in and the whole thing was flooded and that's why it looks like that. What we found on this is that there are breaks in the security features that are printed on the lamina. On the adhesive side of the lamina, there is a security print. Once you lift that off the photo, it will break that security print. Car seals leak, mm. carpet gets wet, mm. passport gets soaked. It's a plausible story, but the idea is why would you have the passport about your person when you're travelling in your own country? Yeah, exactly. Driving around with your mate. The top right hand corner. You can see the break is over the photograph. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then the bottom left. It's not very good at all. Yeah, the crown is just damaged. The hard thing is, like, this place passport is false. He's very calm. At arrivals in Melbourne, officers are just as puzzled by a Japanese tourist who can't stop sweating. We've got a passenger here who Michael and Peter are speaking to. And what do you plan to do here in Melbourne? Just to stay a few days and uh, to take a train to Cairns. Okay. He's just decided to come to Australia two days ago. It makes us very suspicious. And do you have any accommodation in Cairns? What, what accommodation do you have? Somewhere to stay? A, a place to stay? Well, I have a hotel reservation. You have a hotel? Okay. Yes. Buy, buy this phone to use here in Australia? Yes. Yeah? Oh, okay. Just want to check the phone to see if there's any messages or um, any Australian phone numbers in there that might bring some sort of relevance to why he's here or what he might be doing while he's here. No clues in the phone, but the bundles of tissues might hold some answers. What are these ones for? Tomikaze's sweat glands just went into overdrive. It's 8am at the Brisbane Mail Centre. <gasps> oh, look, look, look! Oh, Mills and Boone, an impossible kind of man. Kath works for Customs. You know what, I've got the whole series of these. Oh, Melissa for quarantine. I don't have these too. <laughs> They're part of the team that screens all overseas mail. Cairns. Postmarked Queensland. Radio. Oh, look, it's a willy whacker. The most effective form of birth control ever invented. It's fair to say they've seen it all. Ah, it's a hen's night kit. It's not prohibited. The screening is a lucky dip that often pays dividends. All right, got a live one here from London. It looks like we've got a plant here. A live plant. Looks like it's a magnolia, if that's 
the right plant there that it's come with. Plants and soil from Europe bring with it the threat of disease. Oh, and inside we have a couple of worms. All right. This year. Just having a look through here to see if there's any more worms. Immigration will look after you now, sir, OK? Back in Sydney, my name's Ross, I'm an immigration officer. How are you doing? What I need to do, Daryl, is ask you some questions about your reason for coming to Australia. All right. Okay, would you like to follow me? Just bring your baggage with you. Daryl's damaged passport has landed him in the hot seat. The main issue that is in question here is the fact that your passport has been assessed as a passport that has been tampered with. It's my original passport. It just happened to get wet. It was left under the front seat of a car and the window was left open. Okay. That's what happened to it. It's me. You can see it as if you look clearly. It is an offence under the Migration Act to provide false answers or misleading answers to an immigration officer. Well, I don't know what to say to that, because that's it's my passport. What's the main purpose of you coming here? He seems very nervous. He's like very, he's very sweating like quite a lot. The tissues are hiding some sort of crystal or resin. What is that? Oh. That must be drag. Sorry? That must be drag. The Green Gate. It's the final checkpoint for incoming passengers with nothing to declare. And everything inside the bags belongs to the, yourselves? Yeah. Okay, I'll just have a quick look in this bag here. Yeah. Mr and Mrs Mehmet are back from a holiday in Europe. Did you read question number six? Question number six, please. But there's a hiccup. I, mean, I think they've got a whole lot of bananas. Which... Do you have any... you have bananas with you? Yeah. How come you didn't declare your bananas? Oh, sorry, we, I bought, didn't. we bought those seeds on the plane. Did you watch the video on the plane about what you can bring into Australia and what you can't? Yes, we did, yeah. You did? Yeah, but I forgot all about it. We both grew up with cold. We're not concentrating, I suppose. The fact is that you haven't declared them on your incoming passenger card. We're guilty. Yeah, yeah but I had to buy, buy something because I'm diabetic. I I yeah. can prove it to, no. to eat, and then I forget all about it. I don't need proof, sir. Yeah. I said the fact is that by signing the legal document and declaring that you have no food, you're telling us that you don't have any food with you at all. I'm, I'm rotten with the flu. Oh, it's not good to argue, but you've done it. You've done all right, so what are you going to do about it? In immigration at Sydney Airport, Daryl says he's here to visit a long-lost friend. We grew up together, we went to college together. That's how we, that's how I met Guy. You've never been here before? No. Daryl's having a tough time convincing Ross that he's just a tourist. Do you have a contact telephone number for Guy? Yes, I do. Do you know any other persons in Australia? No one. The main issue that is in question here is the passport that has been presented by you for immigration clearance has been assessed as a passport that has been tampered with. And given that, it brings to question your identity. Oh, OK. Which is not unreasonable, is it? No, it's no. not unreasonable at all, but that's, I can't say much that got it wet. But I've got my identity document here and my driver's licence. I do have those in my possession. Have you ever held another passport other than that no. passport you've been presented? Never. Never, ever. This passport was issued 23rd of March 01. On the back page, this is a replacement for passport issued at Pretoria 30 June 98, declared stolen. So the true holder of this passport lost his passport and <coughs> subsequently got this. Because he's got these documents, right? These documents were obtained after the, the grant of this issued. passport. By failing to declare these items, you could get a fine of $220 or you could even get taken to court. This is not the welcome okay. home the Mehmets had hoped for. Here, madam, would you like a tissue? I've got a jar if they want to put it to jail. No, no, it's not that. It's just, you have to understand the importance. I know I understand them, but I'm rotten with coal. Can you understand me? I've been, I've been robbed. I've been robbed. With, I'm standing on the middle of a road with no money. I've got more, more things in, in my mind. 
I got a lot of things in my mind. I can prove it. I got a Polish report from the, from, from, that's from Holland. Sense. All I'm saying is that banana is a very high risk food to come into Australia and it is totally prohibited to come It looks into like an innocent mistake, but rules are rules. How many times have you travelled in and out of Australia? That's the first time. Well, when he came over from Hungary. Mm -hmm. And yourself? Yeah, it's my first time out of Australia. Sorry. Just one moment, I just want to speak to a fellow officer. Yeah. Just hold him over. Right, yeah. Well, they've done the crime, okay. but should they get the fine? It's Nadia's call. It's their first time out of Australia. We've had handbags stolen, our language, luggage is... We've we been robbed in, in Denham, or was it? I mean, hold on. We've been robbed with everything. We're standing in the middle of a road with no money, no passport, no flight tickets, nothing. In customs, Tomikaze has confessed to carrying drugs. Do you know what that is? Yeah. So what sort is it? I don't think it was uh, in there. So what is it? Um, uh, how do, I don't know how to say it in English, though. What do you do with it? Um, I used to, um, I used to take that. Uh, I used to do that. So, w what do you do with it? I smoke with it. You smoke it. It's a live specimen with the live worms, so it's going to be all for destruction. The worms are going to be identified and then disposed of or incinerated, and the plant will also be destroyed as well. So, the person who was to receive this will not get it. Instead, they'll receive a notice of destruction. London to Brisbane, now to the entomology. Meanwhile, Kath is x-raying a new container load of mail in from the UK. Somebody left their keys behind. <laughs> Dietary supplements. You start to pick up shapes and things like that. Uh, possibly some fishing lures. That would be a mobile phone charger. You can see the wiring is wrapped around. No, no, no. no. Oh, hang on. Can you um, grab that one? I think there might be tabbies in there. Got one, two, three, four, and possibly one, two, three, four, five, yeah. maybe six there. Um, a normal videotape wouldn't have that inconsistency along that area. In Japan, are you allowed to take it? What is it? Uh, is it is against law or something? Yeah, in Japan. It's against law. Tomikaze has been Sorry? caught bringing narcotics into the country. It is a drug, is it? Yes, it is. OK. The reason he was sweating so much, he's a drug addict. OK. What I need to do, if that's a drug, OK, I need to caution you. So listen to what I'm going to say. You do not have to say or do anything, but anything you do say or do may be used in evidence. Do you understand that? I yeah, understand what you're saying. OK. Because of the look of the particular substance, it appears that it may be um, the drug known as ice. We may need a, a translator, so... Japanese. The quantity that we saw at the bench seems to be personal use. Um, it will depend on what the extent of the examination is. I'll have to go because the food of police here. Do you have any more? The demeanour of our passenger has changed significantly in the past 15 minutes. In Sydney, Daryl is falling apart, and so is his passport. He reckons it got wet. Now, has it been wet? Well, yeah, you can see it's... I can see it's been... The pages have yeah. been wet, it's subsequently dried. And you can see that the galoshes, the left, upper left-hand side of the photo, they've been severed. And when you go to the right-hand side, These galoshes have been severed as well. Around the photograph, I can see some yellow. Is that glue? Fresh glue on an old passport could mean the photo was swapped. But we need to make absolutely certain that the exactly passport right. is a, a dead document. Right, if it is yeah. a forgery, it's a good one. Damaging a passport with water is often done deliberately to disguise any uh, fraudulent activity that may have taken place. I'm just unscrewing some of these screws in this video cassette. As you can see from the x-ray, it appears to be some tablets. The sender oh. has tried to conceal them inside the oh. video cassette. The x-ray showed a little bit of an inconsistency, possibly tablets. So we're just going to open this videotape just to double check that they are in fact 
It is, it is tablets, they could be prohibited. Ah, oh, there we go, look at that. Put it on the bench, they're going to fall everywhere. The Mermits have returned from the holiday from hell and landed into more trouble. I think of meats, dried meats and those sort of things, but as the girls have it's fresh food. Failing to declare their bananas looks like costing them a $220 fine. OK. Because it's your first time travelling into Australia again, yeah. OK, and you look like you've genuinely forgotten about them... Genuinely. Yeah, I right, yeah. won't be fining you today. Yeah. I will be giving you a written warning. Yeah, that's all right. You will get a fine next time or even be taken to court. Yeah, I know that, but uh, I, it's, it's oh, just an innocent, innocent we didn't feel it up. That's fine. Yeah. Fair enough. She's told yeah. me about right. it. I will be confiscating these bananas yeah, sure. today. Oh, okay? Yeah. I don't and want it. I don't want it. You can take your backpack there. Okay? Okay, thank, okay, thank you. you. Never even entered my mind a banana. Whatsoever. They do carry a very high risk of disease. Black Sigatoka is one of them. And if these diseases get into Australia, they could ruin our banana industry in no time at all. I don't even want to go out of the country again. It was my first and last time. Never. Never. Home, bittersweet home. Can you believe it? It's Mrs. Mehmet's birthday. Yeah, happy birthday. <laughs> It's her birthday. birthday. <laughs> Back in immigration. Now, Daryl, I've had a good look at this passport and it is in very poor condition. I know that. Mm. But it's my real passport. Mm. <laughs> I asked you in an earlier question whether you had ever had another passport issued to you. Yeah, I did have one before this. It got lost. Yeah, the, the answer yeah, you provided was... to that question was no, you hadn't. No, this is my second British passport. Yeah, I think so. I'm sure it is my second one. Have you ever had any problems with the police in South Africa? Uh, just depends what, what type of problems. What was the answer to the question, do you have any criminal convictions? Yeah. What's the answer you've provided? But no. Mm. Is that a truthful answer? Besides that answer, no. No, it isn't, is it? But it was years ago. Okay. So does, that que does that question indicate to you any period of time elapsed? No, it doesn't. Have you committed any offences which have required you to present in court to answer charges? Uh, I don't know what... No, I don't know. I can't remember. Maybe a couple of... I don't know. Have you got a good memory? No. In Brisbane... Oh, there. The home video is not and what it seems. Excellent. Have you got ten, ten tablets? They look like ecstasy. That's another one from the UK, is it, Kat? Yeah, yes, they don't seem to think we can x-ray through them. They look, they look fine on the outside, but an x-ray shows them up quite clearly, so here's another one. From past history, uh, usually ecstasy tablets that do come through, they have some sort of emblem printed on them. Commercial tablets tend to be very perfect in their, in their shape, the edges. These are a little bit rough, so it could be uh, homemade. Just going to take a little bit of the, the residue. And what the iron scan machine, it'll actually heat it up and cooks it. That's told us that it has tested positive to MDMA, which is the chemical name for ecstasy. And our graph shows us that it's peaked at the calibration for MDMA. The swab we tested was ecstasy. Police seized the ecstasy pills, but there was not enough evidence to charge anyone with importation. Ross from immigration is finally getting to the truth. Daryl from South Africa has a criminal past. 
So, after the age of 18, which you've told me about this incident of breaking into a showroom and removing furniture, yeah. have there been any other incidences where you have been taken to court and prosecuted? It was so long ago, I can't mm. remember. I was in hospital because my memories. Why were you in hospital? I was found OD'd on drugs, but I didn't take the drugs. Somebody had injected it into me while I was sleeping. Somebody tried to kill me. I think it was the ex-girlfriend. And I was in a coma, and I was on seven machines keeping me alive. What sort of drugs were injected into you? I don't know. They never knew. Have you ever been involved in situations where you've been prosecuted for criminal activity? Yeah, I think so. All right. Ross needs to determine if the offences are serious enough to prevent Daryl from entering Australia. I suppose it sticks with you forever. Do you want to tell me about those incidences, Daryl? In customs at Melbourne Airport, the suspected narcotic... Oh, that's come up for methamphetamine. ...has tested positive. Although this is only a presumptive test, it's not um, forensic, um, it does give us a, a good idea that it may be a narcotic. That would explain oh, okay. all that sweating, so a side effect new. from taking the designer drug. We need to pack your stuff up and we'll take you into a room. Okay, and we'll continue the examination in there. Okay. It's called chasing the dragon. What they do is they get some aluminium foil, they put it in there and then they heat it with a lighter and then they breathe in the fumes. He admitted that he was a user in Japan and that this trip here was an attempt to him to get off the drug so he could then return to Japan drug-free. Kamikaze was carrying one gram of ice and 0.3 grams of cannabis resin. He was convicted and fined $500. If we send you back to South Africa, would the police be waiting for you? No. Why? No one will be waiting. Well, you've given me... Except for my mother will have to come fetch me. There's two issues that we have at hand here. You provide an incorrect answer on the passenger card, and you've also presented to a clearance officer a document that is not deemed to be a document suitable for immigration Even clearance. Even though it's not real passport. Well, but we'll anyway, be... let's go. Yeah. yeah. Well, just sit down for a moment. I, no, I want a cigarette now. No, I want a cigarette. Take a seat, Because now I'm getting kicked out for nothing. So I'm going to give you a notice of intent to cancel your visa. This is what drives me mad, because this is my real passport. It got wet. All right. And now all this has come off because it got wet. Okay. If Daryl's even a chance to get in, he'll have to come clean on his criminal past and hope Paul can verify his ID. Would you be able to provide a telephone number uh, of any relatives that you may have in South Africa? My mother. Your mother? so we might be able to contact her. Tell her I'm coming home. Next week on Border Security. He's given me his mother's phone number in South Africa. Daryl's true identity is revealed. Beg your pardon? Hi. We need to detain you in our immigration detention centre. In jail? Getting heroin, heroin, opium and epidemic. And so much shampoo but so little hair.